the Liberation Commission's order must have value. So I think same thing is, should be extended if you consider giving to the Commission. And there are, because the, 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 there is no constitutional bar, because the regulation and development would include use and distribution of water. So tributaries can be certainly brought under this. Sir. And basin would include land, as we have said so. Sir. Basin would include the adjoining land, huge land, how much land is actually there. Sir. Without that proper mapping, the law will not be, not, will not, will not I mean, have a proper, if I may say so, proper, proper setting. The law, the law must have a proper background. It must really, you must understand the periphery of this act. Thank you very much, sir. Sir, in fact, I will draw your attention to all the panelists. Section 6, we have... Uh, sir, I want to make a contribution. Sir. No, no, these uh, are my, my thoughts. Nyaya Murti Ji has said that I want to make a support of the Dresti that the land of the land is three kinds of land. One is the river base flow, one is the flood plain, and the other is the high flood plain. There are three kinds of land of the land of the land. लेकिन ये रेवेन्यू रिकॉर्ड्स क्योंकि अब नेशनल रिवर हो गई है तो ये नेशनल अथॉरिटी को वहाँ की म्यूनिसिपल कॉरपोरेशंस के साथ बात करके और स्टेट गवर्नमेंट के साथ बात करके इसको नक्शे पर इस एक्ट का हिस्सा बनाना ही चाहिए ये जो प्रोविजन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के दिए हैं उसमें से इसमें एक्ट में दांत नहीं आएंगे वो दांत आएंगे उस जमीन को बचाने में थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच सर uh, may I now request the audience to come up with their question. Uh, can, you, can you get the mic please? Uh, sir, we will come later to you. Sir, uh, can you give the mic that side to the gentleman? We will come to you, sir. So, let me just get back to the question that you were talking about. Right. I think it's very good. Uh, it will be good if you can introduce yourself, sir, and uh, then know you. Okay, my name is Vikram Soni. I'm a professor of physics, but I work on water also. Oh, that's great. So, what uh, Mr. Rajinder Singh and, and Justice Ganguly have said, and uh, Mr. Mehta is very important, but I just wish to tell you that it's not difficult. In Delhi, there is a master plan, there's a map available for the last many, many years, and we've been working on that map for 10 years ourselves. And that map clearly demarcates the flood plain. 97 square kilometers of flood plain is there on 48 kilometers of river length, average being 2 kilometers wide. Actually, the flood plain is more than 5 kilometers, and if you go above Wazirabad, it's even 10 kilometers or 20 kilometers wide. And so for the Ganga. And it is 300 meters deep for the Ganga and about 50 meters for the Yamna. And this is what contains the water of the future. So that is what we've been working on for six years. Hopefully Delhi will get a water for a million people. So what I want to say is that all these things are there already. It's not as if to say they are absent. Only it is ironic that the Delhi Secretariat is built on the flat plain. As you said, this is the kind of encroachment that happens. Now what do you do with the Delhi Secretariat? I suppose you should invite Mrs. Sheila Dixit and ask her why they built the Delhi Secretariat on the flat plain after promulgating a law like that, so it doesn't have any teeth. But I wish to suggest a couple of things for your document. One is that I think in the plains, the flood plain, since it is so wide, if at possible, whatever is left, two kilometers on each side should definitely be preserved. It is the source of water for the future. And if you want, I, I can give you a huge amount of literature on that. The second point is, at least one kilometer in the hills, should be preserved. You should not allow any building, any structural uh, building, because the moment a road comes there, the, immediately the degradation starts. Shale hillsides, it takes 30 years for the road to recover. So one of the laws that you must have is, I would say, two kilometers on each side in the plains, one kilometer in the hills. Otherwise, the river is never going to be saved, because even if all the siltation come, coming in, if there is one kilometer of forest on each side, it will not reach the river. The second very important thing which should go into your document is that if you at high flood level in the Yamuna and we have carried out all these experiments, uh, there's half a millimeter is the maximum size of the grain of sand that comes in. 
It takes a high flood level where the liver, yeah, Jamuna goes up by about four to five meters to take that out. It requires a minimum of 50% of the flow will not take that out. But if we put 50% of the flow in the monsoon, it's the only way the river will get desilted. So the ecological flow, and in, in the off season, if you don't have half the flow, you get still water algae. So these two important things should definitely come into your legislation. A final thing I'd say that Justice Ganguly raised a very important point about future generations. Public interest law, like the Magna Carta. There's a very good law of the EU, the water directive of the EU, which is in law like this. But it goes back to Justinian from the uh, Byzantine Roman Empire. Now, the Israeli parliament, I can tell you, has promulgated a law for the future generations which is scrupulously observed because they don't have any water. So we have actually a precedent on which to set this law. So all I want to say by this is that, for example, if you have an aquifer, which you have everywhere in the country, forget the river right now, all our aquifers in Delhi are down almost to zero. You have to have a simple law which says that you can use what you can replenish. But if the aquifer goes down to half its uh, depth, then you absolutely have to put a ban on it, otherwise you lose the resource. Other waters will invade it and you will get salinity. So I'm just saying, I'm giving you an example of, of how you set the law. You set the law by making sure that the river retains its perennial quality for future generations. And this is not hard. As a matter of fact, I'll be happy to help you with this exercise if you want. Thank you. Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll do take some help in future. Yeah. Can you come to Dr. Thaggy, please? I am not clear whether the activities that are regulated will be treated as crimes or civil offenses. Um, if, if that is already clear there, then you can clarify now. Otherwise, the Act should make it very clear. The second thing I wanted to uh, question was, uh, in New Zealand already, a particular river has been declared to be treated as a person. Now, if that law is seen, maybe we can incorporate uh, similar clauses here to let Ganga be treated as a person, if not mother. And once it is treated as a person, then the kind of protection that is available to a person's life will become available to Ganga's life. Of course, uh, things like molestation, injury, murder will have to be redefined in the case of a river, but, but in comparable terms uh, as is stated in Indian Penal Code. So if that is possible, then uh, a great deal of protection of Ganga will be possible uh, rather than trying to uh, m protect it as an inanimate object. Uh, <clears throat> I really am very confused about the role of the commission. <coughs> the role of the commission at one time, Mr. Udayashankar mentioned, is an advisory role. At the same time, you want to have a commission which can regulate. So regulation is not possible without executive authority. So it is an executive authority or not. That should be very clear. And uh, I cannot opine whether it ought to be an executive authority or not. But uh, I want to point it out that it is necessary to be clear about it. Last thing is a clarification I wish to give uh, as to how government agencies <coughs> are to be treated. I am familiar that under the Water Act and Air Act, the full name says Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act, and similar name for air, there is no distinction between a government agency or a private agency as far as the crime of pollution having been committed by either of them. This is in law, but in practice, there is a difference in treating them. That is another matter. But law is quite uh, same for both agencies. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, I would like to give the last two question answer. The first one uh, relating to the regulated activity, what should be the nature of the crime? Possibly we are not very clear yet. 
we are working on that uh, the f uh, last thing is that you know this is an executive body with uh, regulated mandate uh, what we wanted to tell like you know this particular body will let down the good governance principle because uh, what we were not tried to do this particular <coughs> body as a policing agency because you know if uh, the Ganga River Basin we have to think about it's not possible that governments will I mean this agency will have that many of uh, you know offices around the entire Ganga River so what we have taken the model we have taken the model from uh, sort of a market regulator model in one aspect and another aspect we have said that this particular agency will give some sort of a good governance guideline now what actually happened in this case like you know we have given a good governance guideline on different issue preventive uh, what can be developed what cannot be developed and we found that well some of the agency either it is a local government or an industry or a state government or the central government violate those particular governance norms so then anybody in the society be it an individual be it an NGO be it a another government local government in upper stream or downstream uh, anybody can go and uh, you know complain uh, to this particular commission and say that you know this particular problem is happening or this particular agency is doing this thing commission will further investigate and if the commission found that well these people are not abiding those particular principle which has been let down or good governance principle has been let down they will take the appropriate measure now what should be the appropriate measure is a matter of the debate till now uh, we should go for a criminal sanction or we will go for some of the sanction is a criminal in nature some of the sanction in civil in nature we are yet to come out very clearly that's uh, I should uh, submit before you though uh, we have given here at present this uh, civil sanction but uh, we have also among ourselves debating about the criminal sanction what Justice Ganglu told in the morning uh, itself so I believe uh, I could clarify some of your point and uh, remaining uh, this thing uh, Hello. Yeah. yeah uh, okay. Very quick. I think I can see five hands. Number one, number two, number three, number four, four and number five, and number six. Okay. Yeah. So, so I close on that. Yeah. Be so quick because we, we do not want to encroach. We are talking to about other session too. So we do not want to talk about it. No? <laughs> so if you can just uh, you know make your point within one or two minutes time. So can you give it to Katpal yes, sir? Okay, uh, yeah, you please. Yes, become. Yes, please. Yeah, very quick, I will say, uh, uh, um, we have discussed that how can we save our rivers from the action of industries, government, or maybe human being. Uh, my question is related with a news, that uh, there was a news that uh, our high court has given the judgment that uh, uh, some of the rivers should be interlinked and, uh, and there's a time, time domain has also been defined for, for that. Uh, uh, and and then related with this part, my question is that whether this legislation provides the guidelines uh, for any civil engineering structures which may be created on the riverbed, that what are the physical, chemical and biological parameters which are non-negotiable uh, non and which cannot be disturbed like this. Yeah, in fact, yeah, I think uh, we can do it combined. Yes. If I am Professor P.B.A. Sharma. Uh, right, I had my association with IIT Kanpur for uh, about eight years as a faculty member. Sir. Then I spent about quarter of a century in the water management and agriculture, retired as project director of Water Technology Center in the Agriculture Research Institute. Right. And later I worked as an emeritus professor at IIT Delhi. My interest is primarily in uh, conservation and efficient use of water in agricultural sector which is around the, which is the major sector in the country consuming around 80 85 percent of the water resources but my intervention in here is regarding the chapter 5 where you said provided certain provisions for identifying crime and punishment or restrictions uh, may I also suggest that can we also build in some incentives particularly for the industries where we have rules that they must make STPs for uh, cleaning their effluents before discharging into rivers. At the same time, if you can build up an incentive in the form of, for, ins for instance, the, if the industry is drawing water from the river, the charges can be supplemented. Uh,